Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the final episode of Health and Fasting. During this series, we have covered a number of issues of health and fasting and issues that may affect your fast and things that may be beneficial and things that you need to be aware of. We have had a number of questions that have come up from viewers and common issues that people may encounter. And we'd like to take this opportunity to deal with these issues and help our viewers to hopefully carry out a successful and fruitful fast. The first question regards medication. Someone who is on long-term regular medication. Can they take this medication? So with regard to medication, it's important to think about when the medication is taken and how often. So if it's a medication that can be taken at any time of the day, it may be possible to take it at the time of opening or breaking the fast. However, if it's a medication that needs to be taken at a specific time in the day, then this is something that is not possible with fasting and unfortunately it will not be possible for the individual to fast if they need to take this medication. Another question that arose was regarding patches. So a common example of patches may be someone who has chronic pain and has a patch that is worn every three days but releases the medication throughout the time the patch is worn. Or say a lady who is menopausal and has, and has an HRT patch. Can this individual fast? So again, as with injections, so with patches. These patches can be worn throughout the fasting period and is perfectly fine for the individual to carry out their fast. Another question that was sent to us was someone who has asthma and uses pumps to control their asthma and their breathing. They were asking, is it possible for them to use their pumps while fasting? Now, if it's possible for them to time the pumps such that they take them during the time that they are breaking or opening their fast, then that would be okay. However, there are different views about this and some scholars feel that the asthma medication may be the same as taking a liquid. So this would invalidate the fast. So the question is, how bad is the asthma and is it able to be controlled with, say, one daily medication which could be taken during the time of opening or breaking the fast? Or is it something that needs the medication to be used throughout the day? This may be a question that you need to refer to your scholar to ask them, do they feel the form of the pump is an acceptable medication to be taken during the time that you're fasting? I have migraine and headache. This was a question sent in by a sister who suffers with chronic headaches and she wanted to know how would she be able to manage her headaches and is she still able to fast? So during fasting, headaches are a very common problem. For example, if we become dehydrated or go out in the sun. So there are some very simple things that we can do to try and help minimize the risk of getting a headache, which is if we go out in the sun, wear a hat or wear sunglasses, something to help protect us from the bright light and the heat. Also, keeping yourself well hydrated again is a very useful thing that may help lessen the chance of having a headache or a migraine. Also, there are medications that people take to try and prevent migraines occurring. So you can take a medication once a day to try and prevent the migraine occurring. One brother sent in a really interesting question about can I give blood? Giving blood is a fantastic thing for us to do. And in the Muslim community, we don't have enough people who donate blood. But unfortunately, during Ramadan, this is not possible because this would invalidate the fast. But I would say to this brother, please do look into this after the holy month of Ramadan has finished and please do volunteer to give blood because we need blood from the Asian community, from the Arab Middle Eastern community. It's something that is really lacking and it's a, a fantastic thing that you have volunteered to do but unfortunately not during Ramadan, after Ramadan, make inquiries and then please do go and volunteer to give blood. Another question we had was, what if I have diarrhea or constipation? This again is a really interesting question and something that is quite common. So diarrhea is obviously when you're having loose or frequent stool and this may put you at risk of becoming dehydrated. So it's very important that if you feel unwell whilst fasting and you have significant diarrhea that you should break the fast, have something to drink and then try and rehydrate yourself. However, if you want to try and still keep fasting and you don't feel unwell, then at the time of breaking the fast, 
make sure you drink enough fluids to rehydrate yourself. As far as constipation is concerned, this is very common and this occurs because we're eating less and we're obviously drinking less as well. So again, drinking is very important to try and prevent constipation. Also, we discussed in one of the episodes about the type of food that we eat. Eating food that is high in fiber, so uh, bran, these sorts of high fiber foods, and also fruit, fruits like oranges. These are particularly good to try and help minimize the risk of constipation. So hopefully if these, we, if these tips are followed, we'll help avoid constipation. As I said, if you have diarrhea and you feel unwell, then you do need to break your fast and rehydrate yourself. But again, keeping yourself well hydrated during the suhoor and the iftar are very important. If you develop diarrhea during uh, fasting and you feel unwell, then it is very important from the medical point of view that you break your fast and have something to drink because fasting is meant to be something that is good for us and healthy. So anything that makes you feel unwell is clearly a need to break the fast both from the medical point of view and Islam never asks us to do anything that is dangerous. So if you feel unwell and have significant diarrhea or vomiting where you're losing lots of fluid, then you should break your fast. As far as constipation is concerned, there are a number of things that we can do that might help prevent this happening. So drinking lots of fluid, eating food that is high in fiber and consuming fruit and vegetables. All of these will hopefully help us to prevent constipation and allow us to continue our fast successfully. Another common question we get asked is, can I exercise during the holy month of Ramadan? Exercise is definitely very beneficial for us, but we need to put this into context. So during the holy month of Ramadan, it is not a good idea to start a new exercise regime. If you're already fit and you go to the gym or you do some sort of training, then if you can continue, that is beneficial. But bear in mind that you will be fasting and you'll be eating less than normal. So think about your energy levels and don't do overly strenuous activity. Another issue that sometimes people ask about is swimming. Can I swim? Again, the same principle applies if you don't want to overexert yourself, but additionally with swimming, you want to try and avoid immersing your head under the water because there may be a risk of water entering the nose, going into the back of the throat, and this would obviously invalidate the fast. And whilst you want to keep healthy, you want to try and avoid things that will invalidate the fast. So it's important to know if you have any deficiencies, how to deal with these. For example, vitamin D is a very common deficiency that lots of people in the UK and worldwide suffer from. So a very easy way to try and deal with that is to get some sunlight. Go out into the garden, spend 15 minutes in the sun, get some sun directly on your skin. It can't be through the clothes, but sun on your skin, that may be all that's necessary. Sometimes you may need to take a supplement over the counter from the chemist and that's all. But sometimes if it's very low, you do need treatment from your doctor and it's advisable to speak to your doctor before fasting if you are aware that you have a vitamin D deficiency. Other things that may be lacking or deficient in people may be things like iron. So it's easy to try and deal with this sometimes through eating the right type of food. For example, red meat is very high in iron and this is a good source of us trying to top up our levels of iron. Also green vegetables, spinach, leafy vegetables have sources of iron and folate. And again, these are things that we can perhaps use in our fast to open or break the fast and hopefully prevent us from having to not do the fasts. So these are some things just to be aware of and hopefully by using these simple measures we'll still be able to do the fast. If you're unsure about anything then do check with your doctor. High blood pressure is a very common symptom that lots of people worldwide suffer from. So can you fast if you have high blood pressure? Well the answer to that is if you're able to control your blood pressure through lifestyle modification, through becoming more healthy, eating sensible foods then yes there is no problem to have a fast whilst you have high blood pressure. Some people need medication and as we addressed in another question, if you can take the medication at the time of opening or breaking the fast, then again, that's no problem. One issue to be aware of is that sometimes people have the opposite problem. They have low blood pressure. How do we deal with that? Well, first of all, it's important to know what symptoms you might experience if you have low blood pressure. You may feel faint, lightheaded, dizzy, particularly if you stand up. So if you feel unwell or you feel that you can't stand up properly, then again, you must see your doctor and be checked out. Make sure your blood pressure is okay. And if you find that you are un unwell and unable to carry on your fast, then from the medical point of view, it is important that you do have a snack, you do break your fast so that you don't become more unwell.
I am anemic. This was a question that was sent in to us. Am I able to fast if I am anemic? Well, the question is, what is the cause of the anemia? So it's very important for us to think, what is the cause of anemia and how can I treat it? So, for example, common causes of anemia, for example, in women, they have a menstrual period every month. And if you have a heavy menstrual period, this may be a loss of blood and may make you anemic. Other causes may include things like bleeding from the gut, from the bowel. Other causes may be some problem with the blood itself. So it's important to find out the cause of the anemia and to treat that problem initially. Sometimes if there's just what we call iron deficiency anemia, this may be substituted through replacement with iron tablets. And if you can take these at the time of opening and breaking the fast, talking to your doctor if they need to switch your medication, again, there should be no problem with you fasting if you're anemic. As long as you feel well in yourself, then that should be okay. Some people may have problems with what we call gluten intolerance. And if this is actually more severe, it's what we call celiac disease. This is a relatively common condition where people are unable to eat foods that contain gluten. So things like wheat, pasta, these type of things. A question we had is, if I have gluten sensitivity, can I fast? Well, if you have gluten sensitivity, then hopefully you'll know the kind of food that you can and can't eat. So your GP or your doctor may have told you to have gluten-free bread, gluten-free pasta, and certain things to avoid, for example, things like pizza, these type of things which contain wheat, uh, these are important to avoid. And if you can do that and manage that within your fast, then you should be able to carry out your fast successfully. It is important to state that if you have symptoms and you feel unwell, or you're losing weight, then again, it would be suggested that you break the fast and look into why it might be that you lose weight and then see your doctor to discuss this in more detail. One interesting question we had was, if I have a chronic health condition, blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, is it worth me seeing my GP after the holy month of Ramadan has finished? Yeah, why not go and see your GP after you've finished Ramadan? If you've followed the tips and the tricks that we've suggested, inshallah your blood results will be better, your blood pressure will be improved, you'll have a better control of your diabetes, you may have a lowered cholesterol, and inshallah your GP will get a very pleasant surprise and say, oh, how did you manage that? then you can explain to them, I was fasting for this month and I carried out a healthy lifestyle and hopefully that will be something you'll be able to carry forward. So there's nothing wrong with going to see your GP after fasting and in fact use that as an incentive to try and make some healthy, positive changes in your lifestyle that will help improve your health and well-being overall. So dear viewers, thank you so much for joining us for this series of shows on health and fasting. I hope that you have found these shows helpful and useful and that you will be able to carry out your successful fast during the holy month of Ramadan. We are now approaching the end of Ramadan and I wish you a joyous and happy Eid with many celebrations, family reunions, gifts, smiles and laughter all around. And let's remember that the aim of Ramadan is to bring us closer to God and hopefully help us improve our religion and help strengthen the Islamic community. So best wishes to all of you, Eid Mubarak, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.